Greetings and welcome to our faithful listeners of the Day 4 Devotion podcast. And I usually open the podcast by saying, this is core, uh, is it, well, this one is easy because it's it's 52, that's 52 weeks, give or take a handful of this heavenly podcast. Ha, that, that's it, man. I mean, uh, you know, I was just sitting here trying to remember how many is this week number four or five, but I think you're right. I think it is number number 52. Man, I'm sure there's some people out there being like, man, it feels like 52. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I just got to say, you know, we kind of had the idea to start this to go hand in hand with this study of Core 52. And as, as you said before, we, we've been more than 52 weeks, but probably not quite 52 podcasts because of some breaks and some different things that happened. Um, I don't know what the listenership of this is, how much it is, how much you get out of it. Um, but honestly, Ben, these conversations, at least in my own life, have been really, really valuable. And so I hope that maybe that there's been something out there that's helped somebody at some point, even just to kind of get some clarity or even just to kind of help you stay committed to this little study. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad they've been helpful for you. Uh, I find them kind of draining uh, yeah, myself. Well, yes. You know, trying to educate you on all these things that you should some know. Some relationships are like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's really good. And look, we've, we've gotten the question uh, on a few posts and uh, just to let you know, we are going to continue this. And yes. so while this is the final chapter of core 52, uh, my friends, this is not the end. So, That's it. so even if we are talking about heaven here at the end, that, yeah, heaven help us. And, and so there's been requests. Like, that should be the continue? name of the podcast. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. Is it going to continue? Yes, it is. Uh, the other question that we've been getting is when are the t-shirts and merch coming out? And there's no definitive time. But I'll tell you what, they're coming soon. They're coming soon. And yes. we're going to talk more about that later on. We are going to talk about that word soon. Look, the, those shirts will be uh, completed somewhere along the time that the uh, the theme song gets settled on. <laughs> I think it's the same team that's on both. Yeah, it's the same team. Also, just for those of you who maybe are just tuning in as a follow-up to uh, last week's uh, podcast with, you know, I, I guess it's a bit presumptuous to think that you would listen to last week's and then still listen today. Uh, <laughs> but Grits... Uh, it, it does have to do with corn. It's like kind of like cornmeal or something, but like porridge. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's if the grit. Got, if you've got anything out of this, that's it, man. Yeah, Let's I just hope get down to I the nitty gritty. The, yes. The gritty indeed. Uh, yeah. So uh, today we are talking about heaven and heaven is just such a, I don't know. I, I hope it's an uplifting uh, topic for you. The, to me, it's just like made out of hope. Like, absolutely. And the thing is with heaven is we have, I think, so much of what I call like either Christmas card theology or cartoon theology. Mm -hmm. And you like, you know, this idea of like St. Peter at the pearly gates with the list deciding who gets in and who doesn't. There's a thousand jokes about the people who, you know, answer a quiz to get past the pearly gates, uh, you'll see these ideas of of angels who are always in white robes and they have halos and they have wings and they're playing harps. And they look like they're in a Philadelphia cream cheese commercial. There's yes. the clouds. There's the exactly. harps. Exactly. And, you know, there's just, uh, and sometimes I worry, especially for the Christian, that a lot of our theology, that's what we've been looking at, these different core theologies of heaven is more based in fanciful worldly legend and not so much in the scripture. And I think that's why, you know, I, I know it's a phrase in a song, but it's, we kind of live with this idea of like, yes, I want to go to heaven. I just don't want to go tonight. Right. 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 And I understand that to the point of the, of the responsibilities and duties and love that we have for those who are here and the pain we would not want them to be subject to and the things we'd like to do and see and so on that being said if our understanding of heaven is accurate we have to know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord and to go and be with the lord is better than anything here it's it's an upgrade at any time and whether you, whether it's a release from suffering or at the peak of life yeah and understanding too, like the, 
the volume, I was going to say of time, but there's no time in heaven. But That's you right. have to understand, like, there's this uh, Francis Chan uh, sermon. I remember it has this, he's got, like, he's he's preaching and he's weaving this long, long piece of rope. Have you seen this? No. And the whole time he's preaching, he's got this long, long piece of rope. And he just, like, when is he getting to the end of this rope? And it goes and he goes and he goes. And then finally he gets to the end of the rope. And there's, like, this little red tab at the end of the rope. And it was like, like, this is the, the little red tab tab at the end of like you know let's say 100 feet of rope he's like this is life on earth and this is all eternity for heaven like don't don't miss right. what god has for us like in his fullness and in his glory at the, it's not at the expense of this life and again it's not like you're like okay well this life is nothing like i'm just gonna sit back and wait for heaven you know thessalonians uh has a whole deal on that you don't just sit around and wait that's right uh and yet at the same time there is this anticipation of the promised paradise so we're going to get down to it here today and we're going to start in john 14 verse 2 says in my father's house are many rooms if it were not so would i have told you that i go to prepare a place for you and that's what builds the anticipation you know when i look at at this verse and some of the other verses we're going to look at today. And I hope this comes off correct because it's going to sound, it might sound morbid at first. So hang with me. It reminds me of funerals. And when I say that, I don't say like, Oh, it's kind of a funeral text. I mean, like, listen, as preachers, when we're, when we're preparing for a funeral, we're looking for areas of life to celebrate. We're looking for like what you said earlier, we're looking for these big handfuls of hope. Yep. And this is a promise from the Savior. It's a promise from Jesus. Where he's like, when you talk about my father's house, it's like his dwelling. Where again, we just said to be absent from the bodies, to be present for the Lord, for the believer, for the saved one. Like, and that's who heaven is for, by the way. It's yeah. Not for, it's not for good people. That's right. It's for saved people. And so for them, he says, my father's house has many rooms. In other translations, there's a debate over this. It says, is there's many mansions and look, I'm sure his, whatever room the father has is like, even a com compare it to a mansion here is, yeah. is nothing. Okay. And he says, I'm like, he's, I'm going there to prepare a place. Like it's being prepared for you. It's a promise. That's the hope. Yeah. And, and again, you know, this, this place, our final, I guess we call it our final resting place, but heaven is not depicted as a place of like, you know, sit back. We're just going to be yes. like resting and lounging. It's, it's rest for our weary souls. You understand the, the idea, Absolutely. but, but you know, there's this anticipation of heaven. What's it going to be like? And, and, you know, if, if you're reading the chapter, Mark Moore goes through this kind of like list of all the things that are, that are going to be there. And as well as things that are not going to be there. Mm -hmm. And, that that is what's so amazing to think about, you know, like the the reunion uh, with loved ones and and the gathering of the saints. Like to me, just these heroes of the faith that we get to meet and and talk with and do eternity with. It's just, uh, you know, think of I, I I like to think of it like, you know, the best Christmas dinner gathering you ever yes. had, yes. and then the times that by like a gazillion, and then do it again, like, and. And that it's like, you know, you do this and then you do it again tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And it's just this amazing experience. Um, but it's not just for the day. Like this is, it's just great. Always fully in, in, in shrouded by the glory of God. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, that's, that's such a beautiful picture. It's kind of that idea, like, when you have all these beautiful gatherings around Christmas and sometimes you just wish it could be Christmas all year round. And, and, and here it will be, you know, minus the snow, you know, <laughs> no, and, no like, snow. I'm, I'm going you'll, on you'll good authority. Think, there's no snow. You'll be thinking of the, uh, of the reunion. Right. And like, that's, I think that's an apt illustration. And yet even beyond that, like, and sweet your reunion is going to be so wonderful. And yet what it is, is the one who we've been longing to be with, like we'll be constantly, in the presence of God. You think about those high watermarks in your faith where you've just been, you know that you're in a place where God is just meeting you there. Like you can just feel his presence. And it's just like, man, it's going to be like that times a thousand and every day. And you say, like, I think it will be a place of rest. I think it'll be a place of activity. I think it'll certainly be a place 
of worship. I think it'll be a place. I think that like we'll still continue to learn and grow and like it'll it'll just be this perpetuity of of uh, I don't even know how to finish the sentence. It's yep. just of this amazingness. It's the, that's not it's the fulfillment of a longing. Yes. Like like in you there is like this longing and it and it presents itself in different ways, right? And it, it's it could be in in loneliness or it can be in depression or it can be and I'm not saying that those aren't actually those things. I'm just saying that you experience them in different ways. And sometimes there's just this longing and it's intangible. And then each one of us, there's this longing for God. There's this longing for heaven, the heaven. There's a longing for us to be restored to the father. The way I always describe it is it's actually just being homesick, Mm -hmm. right? That you are homesick for your heavenly home. And so you've got this longing for something you can't quite reach. uh, Of course, this side of heaven, because it is actually heaven that is the uh, the object of your longing. Absolutely. And it, it's kind of like this. Have you ever like anticipated something like whether it was like to go visit a place or go see a person or to meet somebody or even go see a movie or I don't know what it might be. And it just, you were so excited to, you know, fill in the blank. And then when you got there, it just, it just, didn't meet your expectations. Mm. You thought it was going to be this and you're like, I was okay. Or maybe it was even really good, but it just didn't do for you what you thought it was going to do for you. Heaven's not going to be like that. Now, what a lot of people do with heaven is we take the few snippets that we really have in scripture because we have, we have some content about heaven, but it's by no mean one of the like, you know, lasting themes of scripture. Mm. Right. And so we kind of have this idea again of like the pearly gates and the crystal sea and the streets of gold. And, you know, it's it's finite minds trying to comprehend infinite things. And John is doing everything he can in the book of Revelation to kind of portray this thing. And we kind of like put up this, you know, images of what heaven is going to be when really what we're working with is imagery, mm. right? Because it talks about the sea of glass or the crystal sea. And yet it says there'll, there will not be any sea. Yeah. Right. And the same way, like, you know, when I only want to touch on this briefly because it's not what we're talking about, you know, when we think about hell, you know, hell is being talked about as a place of darkness, yet there's also fire. And we know that fire emits light. And so you go, how can this fire and darkness exist in the same place? We're talking about the imagery here. And mm-hmm. again, like sometimes we get so hung up on being like, okay, I want to make a, you know, a little scale model here of what it's going to look like. You can't. And that misses the point. The point is, is that you are going to be where God is. It's going to be constantly in his presence. And we're also told that we will be, transformed that will be light that will be made more like him which yeah. brings us to uh philippians chapter three this is the second verse we're looking at verse 21 and this is honestly when i talk about being funeral text this is one that i always and i mean every funeral i've ever done this is part of the text i read graveside that who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body who isn't looking forward to a new body? Oh man, I got to think. You know, with a mug like yours, you especially. Just, <laughs> I don't know if that's something that works to say to your twin brother, uh, especially uh, when you cover your face up. Well, you know what? I, I got to tell you, actually, just in that vein, that you know, like so, uh, the past. I, I think it was last week too. Anyway, certainly within this week, if not last week, you know, that the beard is not quite what it once was. Yeah. And, uh, my youngest son has taken to calling me uncle Dan. Cause, a, Cause he says, you look like uncle Dan, which I, you know, obviously punished him quite, yeah. quite severely exactly. for. Yeah. And actually we had somebody he comment, make fun of his uncle like that. That's well, right. that's not exactly the, the road <laughs> I was going down, but, uh, he, uh, even last week, uh, one of the posts, one of the Facebook posts with the podcast, somebody had commented that they had to listen to the voices to tell which one was which. And I didn't think that was very kind at all. So, uh, Hey, look, man, I think you're sitting in this uh, room with the Montreal Canadiens garb. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's where I'd be. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know what? It's amazing to think about this new body, right? Like that. It's not going to have, you know, a bum knee or it's not going to have, you know, tennis elbow, or it's not going to have, you know, some of the more, uh, pressing ailments that a person could have, you know, it's not, there's no, there's no diabetes. There's no asthma. You know, none of these things, none of these things that would hinder us in the environment that we live in now. Uh, it's just going to be this 
healthy, full of energy, like like his glorious body. It's it's really it's almost too much to think about. Right. And it's going to be just like full utility, like no back pain, no cancer, like, you know, no toothaches. Like, and again, you like, and you make some of that, obviously those are like in varying categories, but man, I just think of like, you know, I can remember, I think it was when Johnny Presley was, um, when Johnny Presley was doing the, uh, the KT Norris lectures and somebody asked the question, he was doing it about eschatology, which is study of end times and said like, will we, will we eat in heaven? Do you think that we'll eat? And he said, I think we'll eat, but we won't have to, you know what I yeah. mean? It won't be for nutrition. It'll be for enjoyment. And I mean, man, have you ever looked at something and be like, Oh man, I'd like to have that, but I don't need it. Yeah. And he's like, you won't need it then either, man, but you won't like, you'll be able to just enjoy it. You know, and I think, and again, like, here, here's the thing. I don't want us to get heaven mixed up with some sort of like carnal kind of self-satisfaction. Yeah, type. that's it's a good word. Be, it's going to be full enjoyment, but it's going to be right placed attention. Right. Right. And so even like the, the transformation of our body, the full resurrected body has purpose. And the purpose is to glorify God. Now, what will that look like exactly? I'm not sure. Like I, I, and again, this is, this is pure speculation. Okay. So hear this from Dan, not from the word of God, not from the book of Daniel, but from this guy, Daniel, like, like those of you that like love to build and work with your hands, I think you'll do that. And I think you'll do it in a glorious way. You know what I mean? I think you'll make like things that, like we can't even imagine. And you know what? For us preachers, we just won't be needed. So we'll just enjoy the structures that you guys are doing. You know what I mean? Perfect. Like, I think, I think that's the full retirement plan, maybe for preachers. I don't know. I'm but banking think, on it. I think that you'll do the things that you enjoy that are good. Like God is creative. God builds. Like, I think you'll do some of that stuff for those of you that love to like garden and plant. I think you're going to do some of that stuff. I just do. And maybe you won't, you know, and if I'm in heaven and you're in heaven, you're like, Hey, I remember when I was on earth and you, you know, Talking to that podcast and like, I'll say, Hey, I was wrong. And I won't even feel bad about it. Neither will you. Yeah. Yeah. The podcast is definitely going to be an enduring memory in heaven. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, there'll you be know, no podcast. I no, can tell you that. I'll tell you what, there'll be no <laughs> day four devotions in heaven. You can no, take that no, to the man. bank. That's you can take right. that to the bank. Look, it's, it's amazing. Cause even in that glorified body, you, you, we ourselves are, in the midst of God's glory and are too glorified, which is really bizarre to think about. Yes. And, and yet like that is the defining characteristic of heaven is his glory. It's just right. consumed. It's, it's lights up by his glory. It is the, the, the we even call heaven when we, when we are in yes. glory. Right. And, and it's hard to comprehend because as we are now, we can't, we can't see the glory of God in its genuine form. Like we see mm. God's glory, obviously that his creation proclaims it, but like think about like Moses seeing the glory of God. Like even they pass by and it's changed. Like, like we can't have, but then the scripture says that we will see him as he is. Yeah. For we will be like him. Yeah. So and, you need that new body just, to even handle the glory that's going to happen. When I think about that, that's another one of those things. The Bible does this lots of times where it just kind of makes your mind pop. It's kind of like, you know, you, you talked about eternity a little while ago, and we tend to think of eternity in like, you know, the direction of it going, you know, on forever and ever that here it starts, it goes on and on forever and ever and ever and ever. Cause we tend to, even with the absence of time, we still have to think about it in time. We think of eternity forever and ever, but we forget that eternity goes the other way as well. Mm -hmm. But there's also eternity past for God. Right. And that's where your mind just goes bang. I don't. Yeah. What yeah. That? Cause like, I what, do you, how, how do you even use a word like the past it, absence well, there is, of time? There is exactly. There's no, and that's like, why you say God has e no beginning, no end. Right. When we talk about eternity, we kind of talk about like for all eternity or like use it as if forever and ever is a syn synonym, but it's not because it's, it's a eternity isn't forever and ever. Eternity is no time. Mm. Like, Time doesn't exist. And again, like, don't think about it for too long. You're going to get a headache. But like, but when your, your body, your new body will be built 
for eternity. Which is just, again, like, it's just like, man, and, and like, just, you know, where there'll be no reason, there'll be no sickness, there'll be no, no reason for hurt, there'll be no pain, there's no crying. Like, like I know, man, for a guy whose tear ducts are so accessible, I'm looking forward to that part, man. I think I'll have it under control. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you there. I was, Other than I, those happy tears, man, like I thought that's it. There'll, there'll be a plenty. That's it. And again, there's just something beautiful about the imagery in in uh, Revelation 21, where it says that God Himself will wipe the tears from your eyes. Right? There's this mm. this tenderness of the, you know. I just I have that image. Like anyway. So when's that uh, coming, anyway, man? Yeah, when's that yeah. coming? Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Well, listen, I'll tell you when it's coming. It's coming soon. And uh, we talked a little bit about that word soon. And of course we talk often uh, about the chosen and how that's a theme in there. And, and uh, look, if you're like, you're hearing, you listen to the podcast and you hear us talk about the chosen so often, you're like, well, I don't know what they're talking about. Cause I don't watch the chosen. Well, what's the matter with you? You need to watch yeah, it. Yeah. And look, if doing? I could just say too, I've talked to some people are like, oh yeah, I watched it and I couldn't get into it. And I say to them, you didn't make it past episode four, did you? Yep. You didn't make it to episode four. They're like, no, no, I watched the first episode. It's like, well, come on. What other show have you ever given a chance? Yeah. You you get to episode four and then we'll talk. If you don't want to watch any further, you got to watch it. All right. So yep. the idea of soon revelation 22, 20, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. And you know, just, it's just living in the anticipation. And and we talked about this, I don't know if it was last week or a previous week, it, it, you know, we tend to tell the same stories, but uh, just how many times in this pandemic, we just said, Lord, come quick. And, oh, man. you know, and it's funny because when you think about, well, it says that he's coming soon and you think about how long we've had access to the New Testament and you think, well, what in the world? How is this soon? But I think soon has a lot to do with, that anticipation that we're talking about, right? That where you know something's coming soon and then you just get more and more excited about it. And you know, it's it's interesting. When you make when you draw near to God and He draws near to you, there is this energy and this excitement about it. And if you're not in that, then you kind of don't understand it. And that's why the world doesn't understand it, right? They're like, right. why is this person so into this religion uh that they're that they're into? And it's just amazing the the excitement and the anticipation that a closeness with Jesus brings. Absolutely. And and that's and that's what it is. And again, we think about that soon. Well let me put it let, let's put it this way. We think about the coming of of Jesus. Let's think about his first coming. And just from a not even from like a date standpoint, but like how early in the scriptures, how long does it take before our need for a savior gets introduced? Genesis 3. Yeah, not very long. Fall of man. There for a short time. Need a savior. First messianic promise right there in Genesis 3. Mm. And we're talking, you know, years and years before Jesus. And and here's the thing, man. Talk about building anticipation. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but three days ago, we would, would have been exactly nine months away from Christmas. Did you know that? You know what? Uh, I did not know that. I only know of today because we have a, a weekly gathering and there is a lady at our church who very faithfully lets us know, uh, how many days there are till Christmas. Okay. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's that, that day of Christmas, people anticipate that. And that's why we talk about Advent, right? And we're actually in Advent right now mm. because Advent is the space between, for us, it's the space between two mountains the first advent was for jesus to come that's what we celebrate at christmas and we're in the second advent right now hmm. we're we are you know gloriously lifting our eyes towards the hills and and you're right man i've said this phrase more times over this past year lord jesus come soon come soon and that's that's what that's what we are we're in we're in advent we're we're patiently, some days impatiently, some days not patiently at all, waiting and watching. And that's the other thing. There's because there's a difference between living in waiting for Jesus to come and living in watching for him become, to, to come. You know, be dressed for know, the bridegroom. Service. Waiting for the bridegroom. That you know, that when he when he comes, you can immediately open the door for him. 
And well, it will be good for those servants who are watching when he comes. Think of it this way. Uh, you ever watch, and I know you do, speaking of tear ducts earlier, you ever see like on Facebook or YouTube, you get down one of these wormholes where it's like these uh, military reunions. That's never happened to me. Yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, you know, it's just like, you know, the, the soldier shows up and the family members just go bananas. I mean, like it's this, you know, they're anticipating something that they couldn't even properly mentally or emotionally prepare for because it is just so over the top. Yeah. And, and I think about, I think about the reunions that we're going to have. Right. And I think about the family that's going on ahead and the people that we love and, and what is so neat about this whole thing is like, like for me, like there's, there's lots, like, I'll just think of, of, he's just kind of top of mind. I think of Gramps, right? Yep. Man, when I get to see Gramps, like that's just going to be mind explosion. I'm going to need my glorious body to even process how yeah, happy yeah. I'm going to be. And that reunion is going to be secondary. Oh man. That's like, that's, that's right. not even the, like it's not even close. It's to not the even best part. close to the best part. And that it's hard to imagine something better. And yet uh, it's because I don't have conceptually in mind what could be better. And yet that's what heaven will be. Right. And like, that's the thing is like, we have all these ideas of like, when we see Jesus, you just don't know. No, oh, ma'am. And it's going to be, you know, yeah, I think that's an apt illustration of the, of the soldiers coming. Cause it's something that they know or they hope for will come at some point soon, but it, but it hits soon. Right. But it hits them unexpected, like a thief in the you, night. You can't prepare for you it. You know, and, and there's just no way. And yeah, it, there's just no way to be. Prepared. And you can't even process what's happening. It just, and that's why you see so many people fall and they cry and they just, they just, you know, as the kids would say, they just can't even, <laughs> you know, is that what the kids say? I think so. I, I get busted on that stuff all the time. Yeah. It seems odd. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. You know, I mean like, it's just that, and that's, that's the hope that we have. That's the hope that we cling to. That's it's, it's all for what is to come. That's right. And, and again, I I've said many times, and I think we've said on this podcast, I have no idea. I do not understand. I mean that in the fullest sense, I do not understand what people do, uh, without the hope of Jesus about the hope of that is to come. Uh, I just, I don't even know how you deal with the things that happen in this life without him. And so listen, if you're, if you're somehow listening to this and you don't know Jesus in a saving way, please talk to somebody, reach out to one of us, reach out to one of the elders at your church or a trusted friend who knows the scriptures. Like, cause, cause I want you to be part of this. Well, and, like, and again, as we said earlier, the only way to be part of it is through Jesus Christ. Absolutely. You know, like I, I'm going I already got my ticket punched, as do you. Me too. So listen, loved ones, church, be watchful. Keep your lamps burning. You know, the bridegroom, he's coming. He's coming soon. And he's coming soon. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's it, gang. Again, that's the end of Core 52. I hope that uh, it's been helpful. We are going to pray. And, you know, what are we going to talk about next week? You'll have to find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray together. Our gracious God. Your, your hope that you've given us is sure. Your promises are true. And our faith is secure. And we praise you for the glimpses of your glory that you've given us even now. We praise you for your faithfulness. We're grateful, Lord, that these theologies are not the stories of legend, but they are true. That you're the creator, that you have given us the Christ, you've given us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that you've taught us about forgiveness, that you've taught us the way to heaven. And we think of everything that we've covered, Lord, from Genesis to Revelation. We thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for the opportunity that, that Ben and I have, even as brothers here, to talk about this. For those who have the, the opportunity to take this journey with us as as serious as it can be and as goofy as it can be, we thank you for the full range of life that you give. And so, Lord, we just say, Lord Jesus, come soon. And we anxiously and as patiently as we can in some sort of combination, Lord, 
await your return. All praise, honor, glory, and power be to our God as we pray through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks very much, Dan, and thanks to our our listeners. And look, you might find uh, in Scripture that heaven is more focused at the end, uh, but heaven is by no means the end. That's right. It's just the beginning. Yep. Excellent. All right. Well, we will see you all. I guess we don't really see you. You'll see us. You'll see us. Next week. Soon. See you soon.